So yes, that was a very, very upbeat section of movies for us. <laughs> and uh, here, here we are at the Rock Film Festival again um, for another Q&A. And we've got some directors from the movies we just saw. Do me a favour and let your guys, you guys just introduce yourselves and what film you were part of. Yeah, I'm uh, James L. Bergen. I'm the writer-director of Bone of Isolation. And uh, I'm Chris Shankman, and I'm the writer-director of Copper and Echo. Awesome, awesome. Two fantastic movies, and I think everybody got a bit of a kick out of these films. Uh, I'm going to start with you first, James, because I guess we now know what you did with your lockdown. Yeah. You were all uh, <laughs> building fences and bars, and you did a, made a movie. How did that work during lockdown, making that movie? Like, did you cast on the Zoom, and, and how did that whole process work? <coughs> So this is actually the second short film that I made during lockdown. The first one was No Budget Over Skype um, that's on YouTube at the moment. Um, but this was the first one that I did um, with a budget. Um, I actually started my filmmaking journey during lockdown. I think that's kind of a weird way to start filmmaking is uh, in the middle of a global pandemic. A lot of time to watch movies. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I came up with the idea after my first short film and I wanted to utilise technology. Um, the uh, lead star, Natalie Martin, she's incredible and she really brought my script life. You know, I, I thought that I'd written something good, but seeing it come to life like that is something I could have never imagined. Um, I'd seen Natalie's work before. Um, she was the only one I wanted for the role of Simone. Um, so I approached her about it and then sort of worked the script around her and her strengths. Um, and we actually shot the whole thing remotely. Um, I still haven't actually met her face to face. Um, so, so yeah, hopefully soon. I was hoping it would be this weekend, but unfortunately she couldn't make it. Um, but yeah, it's such a, such a crazy journey um, to, to go on and um, directing over video call is something that uh, I never thought I would have to do, um, but then I did it twice. Um, so yeah, it's go in between takes going on call with her and talking through some of her takes and her sending me clips across and then saying let's try to make it a bit different. And with the nature of it being a vlog and a lot of it being long monologues, uh, I sort of gave her key points and then I allowed her to reveal the character. Um, and go ahead with, with a bit of in, improv and how she might have seen the character actually talking about events that are going on. So it was really sort of a collaborative effort in, uh, in that regard. Absolutely, absolutely. And she is fantastic in the movie, but it's very much a, a microcosm of the lockdown. And it's all the things that we mostly felt, and, and a few extra little bits and pieces towards the end that you'll get to. But, um, <laughs> Were you worried at all coming out of lockdown, making this movie and, and releasing it to the world that, you know, it's another lockdown movie? Did that ever worry you or...? Um, the thought did cross my mind. I mean, you, you saw a lot of films come out during lockdown that were, that were very similar um, to each other. And after we had uh, I'd written this, obviously the likes of Host came out on, on Shudder and obviously just blew up. Um, but I, I still really think that I managed to create something that was that is unique and manages to capture the very real feelings that we were all feeling during lockdown. Um, my producer, Scott Lyers, who, uh, big thanks to him, uh, couldn't make it today, unfortunately. Um, but he's, well, I sat down with him, I've been friends with him for a number of years, and we really wanted to build a world without showing it, but kind of just... Uh, building it through the dialogue, but also just the way that Simone reacts with the events that are occurring, which is quite, I think, a, a unique uh, thing to do as well. Um, and the feedback that we've got so far has been really, really positive. I've been really pleased with that. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, as I said, I think we've done something quite unique that stands out from the, from the rest of it. Not, not to say that obviously other lockdown films have all the same, but no. I think that um, we created it in a way that sort of set it aside from others. I think as well, I don't know if it was a conscious effort, it's definitely something I wanted to ask you is, you don't mention the words COVID-19, mm -hmm. like it's lockdown, there's, there's pandemic, there's, mm -hmm. was that a very conscious thing that it's like if we want to expand this universe, it could be anything? Yes, so if you pay close attention, yeah, the, the yeah. dates, 
Um, this is uh, um, um, so yeah, I, I wanted to uh, again sort of tap into that, um, tap into what it, uh, everyone was experiencing, but also setting it in a universe where um, COVID hasn't happened. So it's set in the near future, um, so you can relate to that in, in, in a lot of ways, but also something a bit more nefarious is afoot. And a lot of people have asked me, and with my other short film, like, what happens next? Do you, do you know? And for both films, uh, I know exactly what happens next. And in terms of this one, uh, I have been expanding on that, yes. That was the next question, so I'll put it. Christopher, um, Copper and Nickel, fantastic, fantastic shot, and, and okay. much like Bike Veil vale Isolation, another strong, strong female lead. How did you come about this story for yourself, and how, how did this come about? Uh, so, I actually have a, a kind of a, my approach to sort of getting into filmmaking, directing, and writing. So, I've written a couple of feature films, and I'm, I'm often thinking about ideas, and I've been kind of meeting people in London, trying to flog these scripts unsuccessfully, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, I'd spoken to someone about the prospect of directing, and um, I have on my phone a list called Ideas for Ink, and there are a lot of different ideas, beginnings, endings of movies. Um, and I'd had a very good conversation with this lady at a production company, and she's like, you just need to get out there and, and do it. So I was meeting people for dinner um, about two, three hours after this meeting had ended. So I was like, I'll just go to the pub and see what I can come up with. And uh, that, I, I went down the list and this, this idea of a woman being in so much trouble, we don't necessarily understand what, but the concept was broadly, you know, woman abandons child. Uh, and that idea from there really just materialized over, over about a week. And how did you come about casting Cora? Uh, so Emily's actually a good mate of mine. Uh, and Bill I know as well, and I think I actually wrote the script and then sent the script to both of them, saying, I've written it for you, do you want to do it? So there's a bit of pressure involved, but they, um, they very luckily agreed, and uh, for me personally, it's, it's probably the most exciting, fulfilling thing I've done, so I look forward to doing it again. One of the one of the there's a quick a quick second in the in the shot where the screen splits. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obviously when when the choices is getting made and we're going to see the two different sides of it. Was there ever a thought in your mind about keeping it split right the way through, or was it always going to be that way? Uh, no, no. I mean, I think I think the reason why I ended up splitting it is because you know budgets are obviously very limited for these sorts of projects and. The idea initially was actually just to do it all the way through, as you're suggesting. But I think there was a period of reflection, and I thought, if I can tell two stories with the same actress at the same time simultaneously, you're going to give people hopefully twice as much entertainment. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I think that sort of, for me, was a way to flesh out what limited resources we had um, and, and do something a bit different. Awesome, awesome. We're going to get the call of number five done in a second, but does anyone have any questions for these guys? <coughs> uh, I wanted to ask about the decision making in uh, Copper and Nickel. I, mostly I just wanted to ask, do you have any trouble in making decisions? Just with the idea of flipping a coin, decision making is just like my, my worst enemy, like, even between the choice of soup for whatever I'm going to have for dinner is a nightmare. And I'm wondering, just because of the theme of I mean, obviously, it's a difficult choice that the characters to make. I'm just wondering if you yourself have trouble making decisions, or at least hard decisions. Uh, well, I, I certainly have a lot of trouble choosing what films to watch on Netflix or Amazon Prime, <laughs> because there are too many. Um, but I think, I think the decision-making is, for me, a part of the essence of the film. I think there are quite a lot of themes at play, but... Um, I can be very indecisive, my girlfriend is here and I'm sure she'd agree on that. But um, I think in terms of the sort of the centerpiece of the film and the main message, I think it's really about motherhood. Um, obviously it is about decisions and it's about chance and it's about kind of interlinking lives in cities with people don't know about. Um, but I think broadly for me, decision making is, 
is an arduous process, as it is for most. And I think being a filmmaker, I've learned a few things about myself, which is how specific I want things to be. So those decisions can often take a long time to make, or you can often end up kind of in lots of iterations. We did do a lot of edits, but no, I think I'm probably just as bad as the next person making decisions. I agree with you. I thought that actress was amazing, and to hear that you filmed all that without me in lockdown is just mind-boggling. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when she comes to the end and she's talking about her mental deterioration, was that a conscious choice that you left her hair so immaculately groomed, freshly, because it kind of didn't fit with what was going on internally? I know she says, Mum, Charlie, I'm, I'm still strong, I'm going to be there for you, but there was a kind of dichotomy with what we were hearing internally and, and her freshly groomed, because it's my understanding that's one of the first things that goes, we saw it in George, is is your physical upkeep. Yeah, so it, it was, um, for, first of all, it was uh, the opening shot and the last shot, if you see the, the parallels there, and I kind of wanted to keep a little bit extra of the parallels there as well. So for me, it was the the clothes were sort of, again, she's sort of in slacks, but the hair is still that last sort of little bit of hope that's clinging on, even though she is completely breaking down. Um, so yeah, that, that was a lot of um, stuff that I worked on with Natalie. Uh, I, I, I left um, some of the, uh, the clothing was all up to her, and we, we did sit at length about sort of the, comparing the first two shots and also the, the, her, what she's going through and her appearance as well. So yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was a collaborative effort again, that one, keeping those, to, keeping those together. And the question, how on earth did you manage to get every single London shot without a single person, <laughs> including that council estate? There was another person there. How did you manage that? Because at no point in a 24 hour, even in lockdown, have I ever seen those locations without somebody walking by? Uh, yes, yeah, so that was um, that was a challenge, and we had a we had a really cool um, guy on set called Stanley. He was he would just go around very politely moving people around, and it was it was a four day shoot, and we were shooting from it was shot in the, in the summer, so we were shooting from 10 p.m. till 4:30 in the morning, and this is my first film, so I hadn't had any experience doing night shoots, but they really do take their toll. Um, but I think we just, for us, it was very important that the environment, given the way it ends, you know, these two characters run into each other, you know, I don't want to sort of get too into that, but ultimately there is a slightly surreal element to the film. And I think it was very important for me, for the environment to reflect the isolation that we were trying to portray. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I think we did, we did get lucky. We shot very late, um, and we did have a very good person on set who was bribing some of the uh, people out and about on the booze or whatever with cigarettes and whiskey, and people were therefore very um, okay with rolling out the way and getting out of shot. But we, we shot most of it with, um, without a license, though, so we were very aware of police. Fortunately, we didn't come across too many. Uh, so this is a question for James. Do you think the fact that both you and yourself and your actress were so isolated from one, one another helped in her performance and you dialecting it? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. Um, so, as I said, a lot of a lot of what we a lot of the dialogue um, I, I gave her key points, um, and then she. Well, she, she was isolating herself from me when she was going off to, to, to do these takes and get in the zone. So yeah, it, it, was, it was a really unique experience. And I think that, that it really helped, helped her as well. Um, it's all shot in, in her house because we, we shot it during August 2020. Um, so pretty early on in, in, in everything. And the only person that she was with was her husband, but he was away working as a, as a key worker. So. Again, that, that level of isolation really did sort of help her tap into the, the feeling of, of Simone. Um, luckily, he was there to help with the, the last shot with the, with the flashlight. So, um, yeah, I am thankful for, for that as well. But yeah, it, it, it really did help. I think, I think a lot of filmmakers who have made stuff during the pandemic can agree that 
Um, you know, I, I did want to get into filmmaking before the pandemic, but because of the limitations, it really helped me tap into something that otherwise I would not have thought of. You know, my, the the two shorts, uh, the three shorts that I've made during this whole um, two-year period have come about because of the situation that we're in. Um, but yeah, it did. To go back to your question, yeah, it, it really did help the uh, the performance. And like I said, her performance really did give uh, my script new life. I just had the question, what are you both working on next? Do you want to get you going first? Uh, I'm currently writing a couple of feature films. Um, the One of them I was hoping to be the next short film, and upon reflection, I don't think it's going to be affordable. So we'll put that one in the drawer for another time. Um, and then I'm hoping to develop another short film idea I've been working on in quite an abstract sense for maybe six months. So I'm hoping that will come out sometime, maybe in a year, year and a half. Got to raise that money though, that's the problem. <laughs> Um, so, for, for me, uh, I recently produced a sci-fi horror short. I also shot my third short film uh, entirely on my phone uh, in one night. Uh, the next project, the one that I'm focusing on, as I alluded to earlier, is a feature-length version of The Veil of Isolation, um, which I'll officially announce here, because I've told a few people, but I haven't like, done it on a, on a stage or anything. Um, and uh, all I will say about that is we, we will be seeing the wider world that we've built in the short um, and uh, Simone will be returning and uh, but the main character will be the character that is mentioned but not seen in the short and that is Charlie. Nice. I don't know if it's aliens, right? I will say. <laughs> I can either confirm or deny. Right, so thank you guys for coming on. It's been thank absolutely you. awesome. Thank you for bringing your films to the festival. Mm. And uh, I think everybody really enjoyed the, this this section of movies. And we'll get the court number five guys on now. Thank you. Thank you very much.